Hi, my name is Kate, and today I'm going to show you how to speed up your workflow in 3ds Max. Ready? Let's get started! The first trick I use in every project is proper alignment of objects from the start. When you create walls in 3ds Max, they always start from the origin and are positioned right here. However, there's a nuance with floors, they always have thickness. If you later import furniture, it will by default be placed at the zero level and might intersect with the floor. To avoid this, I recommend aligning walls and floors to the zero coordinates from the beginning. This way, your furniture will automatically snap to the correct position without any manual adjustments. The next tip to speed up your work is knowing how to quickly check the dimensions of objects. Typically, people use a plane, roughly matching it to the size of the object, and then check the dimensions. But this method is inaccurate and inconvenient. So, what do I suggest? Select the object you need, go to the Utilities tab, select Measure, and check the precise dimensions of the object but this isn't the only tool we can use. For precise distance measurements, such as when measuring a room, it's best to use a tape measure. Let me show you how to do it. I go to the Create tab, choose Helpers, and find the Tape tool. To place the tape, I turn on Snapping, hold down the left mouse button, and position it where I need. You can place several tapes and immediately see the distances measured in this window. If needed, you can return to any tape measure later and see its values in the Modify tab. When you're done measuring and want to quickly delete all the tape measures, just open the filter, select Helpers, select them all, and press Delete. Don't forget to set the filter back to All. There's another way to quickly measure any distance. Go to the Tools menu and select Measure Distance. I click at one point and then at the second. The measure distance immediately appears in the lower left corner of the screen. However, there's one drawback. To take a new measurement, you need to go back to Tools, select Measure, and only then take another measurement. Let's optimize this process by adding the tool to the Quad menu. The menu that appears when you right-click. It's very simple to do. Open Customize. Select the Customize User Interface. Go to the Quads tab. In the All Commands category, type the first few letters of the tool, Find Measure Distance, and simply drag it into the This window. That's it! Close the window, and now you can measure distances much faster and more conveniently. The next useful option is Select Instances. It allows you to quickly select similar objects. You can find it in the Edit menu, Select Instances. I use this function a lot, so I recommend adding it to the Quad menu for quick access. Again, go to Customize User Interface. Type in the first few letters of the command name. Find it in the list. Then I drag it to the right menu and close the window. Now, select the object you need. Right-click, choose Select Instances, and done. All similar objects are selected. There's also a similar feature already in the Quad menu by default. It's called Select Similar. This command takes into account various parameters like size, similar geometry, the use of the same materials and modifiers. Sometimes it may select extra objects, but in certain situations it can be very useful. Make sure to use it too. Next, let's look at how to copy objects quickly without moving them. This might be necessary if, for example, you want to copy an object to a specific distance. Typically, we drag the object, snap it back into place, and then move it to the required distance. Let me show you a faster way to do this. Simply select the original object, press Ctrl plus V, choose the cloning mode, and click OK. Now the object is exactly in the same position as the original. Then set the desired distance and move it, quick and easy. Another way to speed up your work is by creating presets for frequently used modifiers, such as chamfer. For example, I'll take this table and apply the standard chamfer. I usually use quad mode, 
2 mm amount, 2 segments, and 0.5 tension. I always remember to turn off smoothing. To avoid repeating these steps every time, let's save it as a preset. I click this icon, enter a convenient name, set it as the default, and click OK. The next time I apply chamfer to an object, all my settings will already be applied. You can create multiple presets for your needs and save time on adjusting the chamfer every time. By the way, you've asked how to set up quick access to modifiers. We already have a video on our Patreon where I explain in detail how to customize your workspace in 3 ds Max for fast and efficient work. If you want to learn more and level up your skills, check out the link in the description and join our exclusive community. Become a pro with us! Now I'll show you a small but very useful trick for selecting objects. For example, if an object is behind glass or another transparent element, we often try to zoom in or switch to wireframe mode to select it. But there's a much faster way. Just hover over the object and make several single clicks with the left mouse button. Objects will be selected in sequence, starting from the one closest to the camera and moving further along the line of your cursor. Try it. It's a really cool trick. There's another way to select objects if you have the preview selection option enabled. This is when objects are highlighted in yellow when hovered over and turn blue when selected. In this mode, you can switch between objects using the tab key. Here's an example. When I hover over the glass, it's highlighted in yellow. I press tab and the next object is highlighted, then another and so on. When the object you need is highlighted, just click the left mouse button and that's it. However, to be honest, I find single clicks much more convenient. The highlighting doesn't always help and sometimes even gets in the way. If you want to disable it, I'll show you how. Go to Customize, Preferences, open the Viewports tab and uncheck this box. And done! Now objects won't be highlighted when hovered over. Customize it however works best for you, whether with highlighting or without. The next trick I want to share with you is how to collapse the modifier stack while keeping instance links between objects. Let me make some copies of this box and apply a modifier. I'll add iterations. Now we see that these objects are completely dependent and identical. Usually, to bake the modifier stack, we convert the object to an editable poly, but this breaks the dependency between objects. To avoid this, I select one of the instance objects, hover over the top modifier, right-click and select Collapse 2. Now all objects have turned into dependent poly objects. I think this is a very useful feature, and I use it often in my work. Finally, I want to share a tip that will help you keep your scene organized. This feature allows you to quickly rename multiple objects at once. I simply select all the necessary objects, then go to Tools and choose Rename Objects. I set a base name. And remember to add an underscore. I also want to add a suffix. So I add another underscore and set the numbering to start from 1. I press rename and done. Now each selected object has its own unique name and I didn't waste much time renaming them one by one. This option may seem specific, but it can be very helpful at times. Friends, thanks for watching. See you next time. Learn easily with Soft School.